Welcome to downtown Chicago. Feels like a beautiful spring afternoon. And this is FS1 College Hoops tip-off, sponsored by Lincoln. Perfect day for basketball in Chicagoland. We welcome you inside Allstate Arena, where the DePaul Blue Demons get ready to host the 23rd ranked Creighton Blue Jays. And welcome everybody, along with Dickie Simpkins, Jeff Levering with you. 20 wins for Creighton, but this is game number six without Maurice Watson. They've had two guys in particular, Dickie, that have stepped up in a big way. Absolutely. This is a time for them to continue to figure themselves out without Mo Watson. And Davion Mintz and Kyrie Thomas have definitely stepped up and will continue to need to do that for this team as they move towards tournament time. Kyrie Thomas really stepped up in a big way the last time these two teams met. 18 points, seven boards, six assists, and two steals as well as we get into our starting lineups presented by Jeep Grand Cherokee. There you see Mintz and Thomas in the starting lineup for Creighton. Eli Kane and Billy Garrett, those are the two facilitators offensively for DePaul to keep your eye on in this one. Absolutely. Billy Garrett, Eli Kane, that's the Batman and Robin of DePaul. The scoring machine, the dynamic duo, and they have to perform at a high level to give DePaul a chance. Brandon Cyrus starting to score some points as well. He had 18 in his last game. Our keys to success, sponsored by SoFi, offering solutions to help you reach your financial goals. Well, I just talked about the Batman and Robin of DePaul. Creighton will have to contain Garrett and Kane. Put them in check. And then DePaul, when they're playing their best offense, it's when they have ball and body movement. They will need that today. Justin Patton, one of the best freshmen in all the country, getting ready to tip it off for the Creighton Blue Jays against Tredarius McCallum. McCallum in his first year at DePaul, a transfer from junior college. He's having a great season as well here in Chicago. We're ready to tip it off, and away we go. And the tip controlled by Davion Mintz. Making his fourth consecutive start, and he gets Billy Garrett all over him. And it's a big responsibility for Mintz, an opportunity for him to fill the shoes of Mo Watson. I don't know if he can fill them, but he can come in, be steady, and help this team. Tough step back, knocked down. First points of the game from Justin Patton. When you have a seven-footer that could go into the post off the block and shoot a nice little fadeaway jumper, that is a big offensive asset to have from your biggest player. Joe Hanel got him in the air, and Patton able to keep it alive for Huff. Now the Blue Jays out in front, and Foster smartly pulls it back. Now a jumper short, and Billy Garrett going the other way. Well, Creighton will continue to find opportunities to get out in transition offense. That's part of their makeup. Callum misfires from three. And Greg McDermott was talking about that. They're not going to change just because Foster's out. As Mintz walked with it, they want to get out. They want to run, Dickey. Absolutely. They want to continue to run. They may pick their spots a little bit differently than when Mo Watson is here. So DePaul will definitely have to get back in transition. Greg McDermott, seventh season in Omaha. Nothing but 20 win seasons, it seems like. Doug McDermott has done an unbelievable job with this Creighton team. Brandon Cyrus getting deed up on Cole Huff. He's had himself a great year, too. Seven to shoot for DePaul. Cyrus drives with the left hand high off the window for two. Cyrus has continued to come along as a freshman. He's on the back half of his season now, moving in towards closer towards his sophomore season so he's a little bit more mature confidence is high he's playing well of the last couple of games Patton finds the open man Kyrie Thomas rims in and out on his first shot of the afternoon and Brandon Cyrus we saw him early on in the season Dickie and he was not looking to score the basketball very much very defensive oriented but now, last couple of weeks, starting to find his shot. Well, his core is defense and energy. That's what he brings to his team. But now he's adding the offensive piece. Gives it up to Eli Kane. And his jumper rimmed in and out. Not a bad look, though. Looking for a better game out of Eli Kane. Good ball movement this time from Creighton Huff. Rimmed in and out. My goodness. Put a lid on top of these things before the game today. Well, at one point in time, Creighton was one of the highest efficiency teams from three point line. They've dipped a lot, but they continue to still look for those opportunities. 45% from beyond the arc in the non conference is Eli Kane short again. 
Handel kept it alive, and McCallum comes away with a loose ball and turns it away to Marcus Foster. Two on one, Foster with the left hand, no, and Handel with a rebound. Good hustle by Handel getting back into the transition defensive play to come up with that rebound. Neither team shooting at a high percentage. Both teams one for five in the early going. Yeah, it's a little erratic right now. Guys are not finishing around the baskets. Here's McCallum, and he was fouled on his drive. And Tredarius McCallum draws a foul on Marcus Foster. We got, up until this point, we've had a lot of shots go up, as you see Dave Lado. <laughs> the fifth season is the Blue Demons head coach. Second stint in Chicago. I have to say, you know, I've been knowing Dave Lado for a long time, Jeff, and he's always been one of the top three best dressing college coaches out there. I, I remember when he recruited me to UConn and he would come into town and watch my high school games and watching AAU and just watching him as an assistant coach. One of the top three best dressing coaches in college basketball. Jay Wright is up there. Jay Wright is probably number one. But Lato, he's right there. <laughs> so is Dave Lato your fashion consultant, Vicky? <laughs> Uh, I would say I, I like this style. I like this flavor when I, when he would come recruit. Okay. Definitely like this flavor. Well, you stepped up your game today. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Cole Huff finds Patton. Nearly turned it over. Seven to shoot. And finally, DePaul does create the turnover. Active hands on the defensive end. McCallum fouled on the drive. And he's going to shoot a couple of more free throws. And McCallum is one of is DePaul's best defender, a versatile defender, and high-energy player gets the steal on one end, and it gets out in transition on a one-man fast break to get to the free throw line. McCallum, a very good free throw shooter, above 80%, just doesn't go to the line very often. We've seen him be very aggressive so far this afternoon, trying to get to the hoop. Well, he's averaging 10 points a game. He's emerging as that third offensive threat for this team to go along with Kane and Garrett. One of the things that he has to continue to do is try not to play too fast paced, more under control, see the game a little bit better, but he's definitely contributing a high level for this DePaul team. It's three out of four from the stripe, couple of subs in there, Chris Harrison docks for DePaul, and Tyler Clement, another one of those youngsters for Creighton that's got to fill the shoes of Mo Watson. Foster fouled by Eli Kane. And Marcus Foster gonna head to the line coming off a 17 point effort against Xavier a week ago. Step aside here in Chicago. DePaul out in front early on 23rd right Creighton. It's 5-2. College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Ice might be melting today. It's nearly 50 degrees in Chicago as we welcome you back inside Allstate Arena in Rosemont. We're talking about Creighton. They've been so good. 17 of the last 19 season with 20 plus wins for this great program. Well, like I was saying earlier, Coach Doug McDermott has done an unbelievable job with this Creighton program. Obviously, he had his son playing for him several years ago, and they were a high-level team. But I actually think this team, this season, has been his most talented team, and his team with more grit and a chip on their shoulders than I've seen in the past. Not to take away from the teams in the past, they've been good, but this team absolutely has been the best and most talented team I've seen him have in the last couple of years. Certainly a lot more depth on this team this year. Guys like Marcus Foster stepping up. Kyrie Thomas, we were talking with Coach McDermott before the game today when Maurice Watson went down with his injury. Kyrie Thomas has become more of a vocal leader. They said, we didn't even know this guy had a voice. Absolutely, and, and, and that's what you start finding out with your players on your team, with the makeup of your team. When a guy goes down, next man up, who's going to step up and be a leader? But Kyrie Thomas is a two-way player. He gives you offense and defense, and he's the next logical guy to really bring some substance to this team. Very underrated within the Big East Conference. McCallum finds an open Cyrus. A little bit short, and the rebound corralled by Patton. 
Tanner Clement on the floor for Creighton, running the points. Not necessarily a scoring threat. Plays good defense, very good facilitator. Good ball fake by Foster, and he knocks down the shot to tie the game. Excellent move. Seeing the skill by Foster because he's a scorer, he gives a good shot fake, defender buys it, and now he goes into a one dribble pull up mid range J. A couple of weeks ago, Foster poured in 30 against Marquette. Extended rest here for Billy Garrett. He's getting ready to check in again. Cyrus drives and again short, altered by Patton. It's going to go to Creighton. Seeing the defense pick up a little bit for the Blue Jays. Yeah, I don't know if Cyrus was confident when he made that move. I mean, when you go in there, you need to have a confidence level that when you shoot, you're shooting to make, not just trying to get a shot of it. I don't think he had it right there on that move, and he's been playing well in the scoring column of the last couple of games. See Marcus Foster there tying the shoelaces was grimacing just slightly on his way back up the floor after making that nice shot. Keep an eye on Marcus. So Justin Patton knocked down that first shot. He's been quiet since. Fade away from Foster short good defense by Kane. Just a tough shot for Marcus Foster. Yet to see a shot attempt from Billy Garrett, second leading scorer on this DePaul team. Patton altered that possession and a walk by Handel. McCallum a little frustrated. Well, that's what I'm talking about with McCallum. You can't already have your mind made up on what you're going to do. It seemed like when he caught the ball, he already said to himself, I'm going to make this move, get up in the air, take a shot. And now you have to make decisions after when that doesn't work. Play with the feel of the game. Let it come to you. The reserves in there now for Creighton. Toby Hegner on the floor, as well as Isaiah Zierden. Zierden was lights out against DePaul. These last time these two teams played, Patton misfires on the shot. It's going to stay with Creighton. Patton a little frustrated, didn't get the roll. Well, he didn't get the roll, but Jeff. Patton is a seven footer. <laughs> Did you just see how he put the ball on the floor going left with nice agility mobility and a soft touch. You don't see too many seven footers be able to put the ball on the floor like that inside and a good feed to Marcus Foster on the out of bounds. Justin Patton what he's been able to turn into these last couple of years is really remarkable Dickie. Oh, absolutely. I mean, nobody really knew about Justin Patton. He sat out last year, red shirt of the year to get stronger. And he has had an amazing first year of college basketball and has caught a lot of eyes. I mean, there are a lot of eyes here to watch him play this game today and see his skill set. Just watching him fly around during warmups, it's a thing of beauty. Well, the thing is, I mean, Creighton was able to find him, you know, one of those hidden gems. And, he had the skill set of a guard because he was always small, smaller and had a big growth spurt. Shot clock winding down and the three knocked down by Hegner. Hegner with a big, well-needed shot as the shot clock was winding down. He has that ability to knock down three-point shots as a big, a stretch big. DePaul's missed their last five shots from the floor. Creighton on an 8-0 run. Harrison Docks ends the stretch with a three. Harrison Docks has propelled himself to a good reserve off the bench with making shots like that and getting defensive stops. Now wide open and missed that one. Billy Garrett knifing in for the rebound, and he's going to go to the line. And this is what DePaul needs, creating second opportunities on offensive rebounds. Harrison Dock's creating a steal in transition, but he's increased his playing time because of his ability to make shots like he did and just doing quality things on defensive end. DePaul's done a nice job from the outset of slowing down Creighton. Doesn't seem like they're getting out and running the way that they want to today. Well, they seem like they have a sense of urgency and a focus in their transition decent. Billy Garrett knocking down the free throw. He's done that quite a bit in his career at DePaul. 
The all-time leader in free throws made. 529. And you have to love a player who can get to the free throw line. A guy who is aggressive enough, strong enough to attack the basket and get fouled to get to the free throw line. That's a big time quality you look for in a player, especially a guard. And he's over 90%. Absolutely. It's not like he's taking a thousand free throws and making half of them. And he's had some big free throws in these games that DePaul has played in in his career. I mean, out of those 500 plus free throws, there have been a sprinkle of those free throws that have been game winning or game changing free throws to put them up or tie a game. One of them was their only win in Big East play this year against Providence. So last time they won a ball game, they've lost seven in a row. They climbed within a tie here with Creighton. And they create another turnover. DePaul out in front, Billy Garrett. No shot, goes down hard. And Greg McDermott looking in at the officials is Billy Garrett with the steal and a hard foul. Team's trying to find their stroke. Hagner with a three for Creighton, followed by Harrison Docks. We're all tied in Chicago. assistant coach Rick Carter assistant coach Patrick Sellers talking about picking up the energy picking up the energy I mean you have to do it you see John Paxson sitting baseline you better pick up your energy he's not here he's here to look at some NBA prospects pick your energy up you got an NBA president of basketball operations sitting here watching a game you know obviously they're looking at Justin Patton but here's your opportunity right Jeff so many guys who have been scouted that get found when they're looking for somebody else. Absolutely. McCallum with a tough shot. And Creighton going the other way. But how many times have you seen it where somebody has a great game, they're looking at somebody else, and that's the guy that gets the scholarship or the, the draft choice? Absolutely. I mean, that happens the majority of the time. And all of a sudden now, a kid or a kid, a high school player, a college player takes advantage. You might be looking at my teammate. Hanson fouled and a chance for a three-point play just off the bench. Zach Hanson. It is so good for Creighton to get Zach Hanson back from his injury. The big, strong body, the ability to finish around. I felt like when he got hurt in that St. Thomas tournament, Paradise Jam, I thought that was going to be a big hit to this team. Obviously, you never want to lose a player due to injury, but Creighton was able to maintain, and now it's good to have him back. He brings so much to this team from a physical standpoint. Played 12 minutes in their loss against Xavier last Saturday, most minutes since sustaining that injury. And getting healthier and healthier right in the nick of time with six games to go in conference play. Thomas knocked it away from Billy Garrett. Kyrie Thomas might be the most underrated player defensively in this conference. I would agree on that. He's an underrated player. He's one of my biggie sleepers. He's underrated offensively and he's underrated defensively. Only a sophomore, but just so focused on being the best player on both sides of the ball. Ranks in the top 10 in the conference in field goal percentage, rebounds, and steals as Billy Garrett misfires from three as the shot clock was winding down again on DePaul. Shooters all over the floor for Creighton. They go inside. Hansen able to get it to go over Eichelberger. And that's what he brought to the table before he got injured. A wide body who establishes post presence in the paint and can deliver on some jump hooks. Nice post entry pass. Great feed from Hanel. And a foul. I believe they're going to get an offensive foul on Billy Garrett. Dave Lato a little stunned. Well, Hegner giving up his body. He had his position. He had his hand straight up, giving his body up for the team. Right there in the nick of time. Absorbs the contact. That's an easy call right there. See Dave Lato in the background, hand on his face. And Billy Garrett on the bench with two fouls and just two points. And that's definitely a 
a hit to this DePaul offense. They need Billy Garrett on the court, especially in this first half, to continue to establish themselves offensively. And him sitting on the bench, we'll see how that plays out as this first half goes along. See a lot more of Devin Gage and the small guards. Eli Kane from the backside poked it away. And Devin Gage, the freshman. Heard the assistants just coming out of that last timeout saying, you guys got to start talking a little bit. Chris Harrison docks, knocks down another three, his second of the afternoon. And that's just right there in rhythm. Harrison Dots getting himself in rhythm off the dribble. He's an excellent shooter off the bounce and catch and shoot. Two out of seven from distance for DePaul. Extra pass to the corner for Thomas, and he answers. And there's some offensive side of Thomas. His Creighton team, they're very good at passing the ball, making an extra pass, and making precise passes to increase the chances of the shooter to make the shot. Offense starting to pick up for both teams here under the 12 minute mark. Eli Kane, he's been suffocated so far. Tough shot. Harrison Dox got it again. I've seen it before in this arena. Harrison Dox has the ability to get it going. He plays with some swag when he has the ball in his hand. As you see, Gage hustling. That's what Devin Gage brings to this program. Zierden on the other end. The rainbow doesn't go. Rebound by Handel. Chance to tie or take the lead for DePaul. And that is what the coaching staff was preaching in the timeout. Take your energy up to another level, and when you do, it, it makes good things happen for your team, as you see, creating turnovers and getting defensive rebounds. Devin Gage facilitating the offense with Billy Garrett on the bench with those two fouls. Four to shoot, got to go. Harrison docks. Bit of a heat check, but a real tough shot with the shot clock winding down. Zierden able to knock down the triple on the other end. Even though Mo Watson is not playing with this team due to injury, they still look for every opportunity to get out and transition offense. That is a big part of their scoring power. Zierden, one of the senior leaders for Greg McDermott. And it's out of bounds off to Paul. Great hands from Creighton to force the turnover. Creighton getting out in transition. Kyrie Thomas finding a Zierden for a wide open knockdown three. Hashtag splash. 23rd ranked Creighton up by five on the road against Paul. But the Blue Demons hang it in there because of Chris Harrison docks three straight threes for the Blue Demons. DePaul nine points off the bench and all by Harrison docks. Once he gets in the rhythm off that bounce, you better watch out because he can knock him down with the best of them. Transfer from Western Kentucky a couple of years ago. First opportunity he's had a chance to play. He had a wrist injury early on in the season. Hampered his playing time a bit, but he's back in there. And again with Billy Garrett on the bench with two fouls, Chris Harrison Docks has an opportunity to really shine here this afternoon. And he's taking advantage of it as this season has gone on. Coach Lato has given him more playing time. He's a veteran player that you need to come in and give you some scoring, which he provides, and just come in and be solid on defense. The thing that is a little bit troubling, however, though, Dickie, is that if you're DePaul and you start to get into a three-point shooting contest with Creighton, tough to hang in there with him. Is Hanson inside. A great presence off the bench for Greg McDermott. Hanson is just taking advantage of the pick and roll. That is the traditional pick and roll. He's rolling hard. They're finding him. He's catching it under control and finishing at the basket. Harrison Docks, because he's made those threes, he's got Kyrie Thomas on him now. Six to shoot, another turnover, the sixth in the game for DePaul. Foster, cross-court pass. And Creighton slowing it down a bit with the tempo. See the ball movement, eight assists on nine makes. 
Good denial by Joe Handel, forcing the turnover. And Joe Handel, I mean, you got to tip your hat to him. He accepts his role, his responsibility. He stars in his role. That was just a good defensive, as you see, the good offensive move by Eli Kane, the spin move. Terrific move by Kane. He's finally on the scoreboard. And Joe Handel doesn't get enough credit for what he's done for this team, was not expected to play a starting roll as we see the bucket go down for Kyrie Thomas. Joe Handel started every single game for DePaul. You see Kyrie Thomas on a one-on-one -on -one against the freshman, just using a nice inside-out left-hand dribble crossover and just taking advantage of the young fella, being aggressive, making the contact, and knocking it down. Good seal down low from Hanson as Thomas converts on the three-point play. Hanson headed to the bench. And what's going to happen, Jeff, as Creighton continues to progress, they put Mintz in the mix of being the point guard, but Kyrie Thomas and Zierden are going to have to take on some responsibility. Tough shot from Kane. Ran into the seven-footer, Patton. Thomas had it poked away by McCallum out of bounds off of Thomas. And there are the long arms from Tredarius McCallum coming into play. Good job by McCallum getting back in transition defense and pursuit, chasing down the ball and getting his hand on it, causing and disrupting it for a turnover in their advantage. That's what McCallum can do. You want to stay within what you do. Todd off the leg there of Kyrie Thomas. Eli Kane pushed off. Kyrie Thomas went to the deck. That's an easy call. I mean, <laughs> Eli Kane did push off. Thomas may have sold it a little bit more than what it was, but at the end of the day, aggressive move by Eli Kane, but a little extra on the push off. Easy call for the referees. Subtle things that Kyrie Thomas brings to create that turnover. Creighton with an eight point lead, their largest of the game. Foster with a jumper. Short McCallum with another board. One of the best in the Big East in terms of rebounding, Tredarius McCallum. Cyrus got locked up. Harrison Docks again knocks it down and a foul. The kid is just an unbelievable shooter. And once he makes his first couple, his confidence continues to increase. I told you he has a swag. He has no conscience when it comes to letting it fly from behind the three. And now a potential four-point play. Knock that one down from nearly the logo here at All-State Arena. And Harrison Docks converts on the four-point play. Davion Mintz going to check in for Zierden. But one of the things about DePaul right now, Jeff, is on the offensive end, they still need to get more ball movement, create better shots. Right now, they're getting bailed out because Harrison Dox is knocking down some unbelievable three-point shots. But I don't know how long that can last for. As you see, the excellent defensive play by Harrison Dox, showing his offense and now showing his defense. He is all over the place in this first half and all with Billy Garrett on the bench. The question was, where's the scoring going to come from with Garrett on the bench? Eli Kane has been quiet in the early going. It's all been because of Harrison Docks. Absolutely. A veteran point guard stepping up scoring-wise and defensive-wise. It's the second turnover he's created. Kane got into trouble. Harrison Docks pulls up in front of Patton too strong. And Patton with another rebound. That's his fourth. And that was a good defensive pick and roll defensive play as you see Foster being aggressive in transition but that was very good defense by Justin Patton in the pick and roll being able to move his feet laterally and contest Harrison Dock's shot as he's coming downhill at a big Brandon Cyrus just picked up number two Greg McDermott with a couple of words to Kyrie Thomas as Foster at the line and rattles in the first. And you know, Creighton is not one of your better free throw shooting teams. I mean, for the season, they're only shooting 67%. In the Big East, they've increased their four percentage points to 71%. But for a team that plays so well moving the ball and knocking down threes and getting out in transition, one of their Achilles heels 
is their free throw shooter. Came back to haunt them in that loss, a two-point loss against Xavier last time out a week ago. Otherwise, you're looking at Creighton sweeping Xavier on the season if they can knock down a couple of free throws late. Kane with a tough jumper. And the rebound goes to Huff. But I like the ball movement by DePaul in the flex offense. And that right there, that right there, Jeff, is why I try to teach the young fellas two-hand catches. Two-hand catches. When you assume trying to catch with only one hand, that's when the ball goes out of bounds. And Foster was stuck in between trying to get his feet set for shooting a three and trying to catch the ball and mishandled it. Turnover number nine for Creighton. They average just under 12 a game. Some of that, the pressure from DePaul defensively. Some of it, unforced errors. McCallum trying to cut through three defenders, able to do it. Tough shot. A very difficult shot. McCallum being aggressive. I don't know if the spacing was right, but he has the talent and the ability to make tough shots like that. You just hope that it's fewer tough shots and more better shots. Just a three-point game. Huff backing down. Tough shot over Kane, and he knocks it down. Woo! That was some Akeem Olajuwon footwork <laughs> move right there by Huff. He's normally known as a three-point shooter and kind of put the defender in the mix with some footwork to a fadeaway. Nothing Eli Kane could do there except for tip his cap. Ball sticking a little bit here for DePaul. There's another fadeaway. Cyrus off the mark with that one. Patton with another board, number five. Sets a double screen. And the southpaw couldn't hit it. Offensive rebound by Kyrie Thomas. Another tough shot for Huff. This time over Harrison Docks. And then what you're seeing right now is a mature Creighton team. They're not wasting any time. They saw the mismatch with Huff versus Harrison Docks, and they're giving them ball to take advantage of that mismatch. Dave Lato calls a timeout. Creighton building the lead again, but Cole Huff, high percentage of tough shots. Akeem Olajuwon ish. The nice post up footwork fadeaway. Knockdown baseline, Jay. Creighton up by seven on the road in Chicago. Don't forget, coming up, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, and Nick Baugh all standing by out in Los Angeles. Talk about this one today and a lot of other games going on in the Big East as well. It's crunch time here in the Big East. Well, the Big East has been beating each other up over the past couple of several weeks. I mean, you're talking about a Big East that started off with three teams in the top 15, and they've been beating each other up so much that they're spreading out throughout the top 25. But you can see, hey, I, hey, and here's my predict. Don't even try to act like I didn't predict that St. John's and Marquette were going to be battling out for the fifth spot. That was one of my predictions early in the Big East season. I, I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> I'm not going to. You said Creighton was going to be a two seed as well. They could. No, no. What? No. What? I, I did say that, but I also said that Creighton was going to win the Big East tournament. And I still think, as you see, nice offensive. Rebound pursuit by DePaul. Hanel finishes it up as McCallum started to tap it. And those are the type of offensive basket that DePaul needs. And Joe Hanel cleaning it up. Billy Garrett back on the floor with his two fouls. Just over two minutes to play. But Creighton is certainly going to pose some problems for anybody in the Big East and in tournament time as Patton misses a shot. Just the third shot of the afternoon for Justin Patton. Well, good job by Hamill. I mean, that's a tough assignment having to defend a seven-footer in the post. And they're going to say no shot. Everything happened before for Billy Garrett. Why can't, why can't we get... There's, there's some rules in college basketball that I need changed. There are a lot of rules. There's a lot of rules, but <laughs> one of them... I, I need. Can we implement a continuation in college basketball? I mean, serious. Like, guys are making very skilled moves. And it adds a little flavor to the game, but can we can we add a little continuation here? I'm sure, Billy Garrett wants the continuation. That's for sure. Creighton 
with another team foul and Paul shooting free throws from here on out. Kyrie Thomas picks up the personal. I want to see the continuation because guys make offensive moves they keep their concentration. I mean the fact that they get fouled give them a chance to still get a bonus throughout the action. Joe Handel misses the front end of a one and one. We saw a game a couple of weeks ago Dickey Marquette and Providence Andrew Rousey hitting a shot with his left hand on a continuation. Yes a, 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 a three point shot. Mm -hmm. Turn it into a four point play. That was an unbelievable <laughs> shot. <laughs> Pump fake got fouled and shot it with his off hand and made it. Hagner no doubt about that one. He drains another triple. Creighton just has a nice balance of bigs guys that can play on the perimeter and knock down long shots and then guys that can play in the paint and finish. Garrett double teamed it's tipped out of bounds off of Hegner and Hegner trying to tell the official at Corbett that it was off of Handel. Officials now getting together on the far side and Evan Burroughs comes in and overrules. Well, right now, if you're DePaul, you have to get past the fact that they gave the ball to Creighton. You need a defensive stop right here. As you see them putting a full court one, two, one, two, one press on. Under a minute to play here in the first half. Kyrie Thomas. That kid can elevate. Hashtag special delivery. Kyrie Thomas going through the lane with explosion. Playing way above the rim. Guys on the bench trying to hold each other back. That was special. Thomas, we talked about early in the game. Last time these two teams met, he went nuts. Harrison docks with the left hand. Had it altered. Hagner with a rebound. And Creighton can play for the last shot. And a timeout called by Greg McDermott. Step aside for just a moment. Creighton with their largest lead of the game. They're up by 10. <laughs> 23 seconds to go here at Chicago. DePaul had pulled within just a couple of points, but here's this run to end the half from, uh, from Creighton, excuse me. Being aggressive, creating a mature team. This is where DePaul has to get stops. They have to be more focused. They have to minimize the type of turnovers and misplays in this critical of the first half. Gonna play for the final shot. Need a defensive stop right here by DePaul. Marcus Foster doing it himself. In the corner, Cole Huff knocks down a three. And Creighton with a feverish end to the first half. Pretty simple basketball. Put it in your best scorer's hands. Make the defense collapse and kick it for an open Huff in the corner. Kyrie Thomas, he's your hashtag, Dickie. Doorbell rings. Hashtag special delivery. The dunk by Thomas above the rim. Hold me back. Keep Grand Cherokee halftime show coming up. begin our second half here in Rosemont along with Dickie Simpkins and his awesome boutonniere Jeff Levering with you and Dickie uh, all kidding aside Creighton was so balanced in that first half we we're talking about different guys who can make an, an impact on this team but they were so balanced that entire first 20 minutes and that's what they need to figure out they have to continue to find that even balance without Mo Watson they've done it and out of the 39 points in the first half 16 points off the bench that is excellent for a team continuing to progress and find their new identity our first half stats presented by Jeep and for DePaul Chris Harrison docks he's pretty much all the scoring and it's all off the bench he had himself four threes and he had half of the entire field goals for DePaul you expect something better from Billy Garrett here in the second half well the veterans stepped up Harrison Dox stepped up with the absence of Billy Garrett Jr. being in foul trouble Harrison Dox did an excellent job contributing offensively and doing his job defensively see the numbers there just one out of eight 
for Garrett and Kane combined in four total points. Got to get something from those two if DePaul wants to climb back into this one. Well, I talked about it in the beginning, and the keys for Creighton was to contain Billy Garrett and Eli Kane, and they've done a good job so far. Justin Patton has been relatively quiet, knocks down the fadeaway jumper, and a chance for a three-point play. And again, you see some of the talent that the freshman, seven-foot freshman, is displaying right there in the post, taking advantage of a smaller handle, guarding him, just going hard, a little bit of a thrust dribble, which I wanted to see him do in the first half. He's doing it now, and just raising up over the defense. Creighton starts the second half just as they started the first with Justin Patton with a bucket. One thing you love about Justin Patton, he can, you can generally see that he loves playing this game. That smile is from ear to ear. Absolutely. McCallum misfires on the first shot and a foul on Eli Kane as he was holding Kyrie Thomas. Third personal for Eli Kane. But Justin Patton, just a, a real genuine excitement to play this game. Oh, we talked to Coach McDermott earlier talking about all the attention Patton has gotten from the NBA scouts and NBA personnel as they're in attendance today and how he's been able to handle and manage that and stay focused with his performance. And they just talked about they've been trying to keep a good foundation as you see him going up. Had two, guys, that love. Had two guys on him. And Patton has been able to keep himself even keeled and comes away. I know you got a hashtag for that, Dickie, somewhere. Hashtag security protect my house. This is what they want to see him pursue block shots. Last game he had five block shots. That's what you want to see your seven footer do that's mobile, his good agility to go pursue block shots. Billy Garrett thought he was fouled, trying to hustle his way back up the other end of the floor. Marcus Foster. And the follow no by Patton had another couple of hands in there with him. Here comes McCallum on the other end. And the finger roll too short. Foster, transition three. It's a five-point swing right there if you're Creighton. And you have to be careful if you're DePaul. If you're going to get into a transition game, you have to convert. You can't come up with empty possessions because if you do, Creighton is right back at you in transition, and they have a high percentage of finishing. An extended run of 18 to 2 as Garrett swatted again by Patton. I think they're going to get a foul underneath. The pickup Huff on the personal, but Patton was on the top side, throwing it into the seats. Well, Patton had a quiet first half, except for the little fadeaway jumper. And you see in this second half, he's come alive. High energy right now, high motor, blocking shots, running the floor, and showing his ability to pass. I believe Dave Lado just picked up a tee. And indeed he did. He needs to drink of water, cool himself down. When you when you have gotten the cool and collective Dave Lato upset where he gets a tee, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Houston, we have a problem. Dave Lato, we've described it a couple of times. He looks so cool and calm. He's like a duck on top of the water. Where his the upper body looks great, but you know underneath they're just <laughs> going crazy underneath. But he has so much. He is. His poise, his demeanor, his presence, it never gets out of a level where it throws his players off. He's able to still deliver the message to his players with a nice, calm, but assertive and firm voice. And right there, he got a little upset, got the tech. But the suit stayed cool, though. You see, the suit didn't get out of place. <laughs> Go get a drink of water and... Get himself back to even keel. Creighton right now, if you're not careful, they're going to start running away with it here in the second half. Now up by 21 and now 20 points after the free throw from Billy Garrett. If you're DePaul, you got to really dig down deep just under two minutes into this second half and keep this game manageable. And they're capable of doing it. I've seen them do this before, come back. They all of a sudden show a more sense of urgency defensively. They share the ball. They get ball movement. They start getting stops. They start all working together. And that's what they need right now in this next two, three-minute spurt. You see them already pressuring in the backcourt. 
deep three from Hegner, short. And Joe Handel with yet another rebound, number six. And you know, Creighton defensively, they can be a more packed in defense and force DePaul to shoot jump shots because they're not a high percentage jump shot shooting team. Shoot just 43% from the floor. Handel had a point blank shot, but it was altered. Those are the ones that got to go down. Handel blocks it as he was on the run. And I love the Handel's effort. I love the job that he does. A lot of things that he does in detail don't go in the stat book. But the fact that he missed the layup and still sprinted down court in transition to make a block on the play, you have to love that effort and energy. If you're a coach anywhere in the nation, give yourself seven Joe Handles and you're going to be just fine. Marcus Foster knocks down the jumper. Absolutely, I, and I say it all the time when I see Handel play. He understands his role, he embraces his role, and he's a star in his role. Mm -hmm. Still waiting for Billy Garrett and Eli Kane to do something in this ball game for DePaul as Garrett splits a couple. McCallum with the layup. Now you're DePaul, you have to get right up on pressure defense, pick up full court, try to turn the intensity up on the game. No look from Patton, extra pass to Foster. Good ball movement, but couldn't capitalize on the bucket. And there's Joe Handel again on the floor. Brandon Cyrus fouled, and he's going to go to the line. Well, he, <laughs> Cyrus made something out of nothing. The bottom line is you're getting to the free throw line for an opportunity to make two with the clock stop. You got a defensive stop. Now it's all about, and we talk about this in basketball, it's all about trying to put together five stops. Five stops with five conversions, and that puts you back in the game. Got to have it here. And Brandon Cyrus with the first free throw. DePaul 9 of 11 from the charity stripe. One of the better free throw shooting teams in the conference, and that's mostly because of Billy Garrett. 91% coming in. And when you're a smaller team like DePaul, it's even more important defensively that everybody is doing their job, doing the detail of their job, and gang rebounding. You can't have any slippage. Harrison Docks back onto the floor for DePaul. He was the spark in the first half. And McCallum with those long arms creates the turnover. Officials stopping play. Officials finally getting together. And they're saying that McCallum stepped out of bounds. He didn't get forced out of bounds? Not a, not a great signal from the yeah, officials on what's going on. Yeah, that, that kind of would bother me. Not a confident whistle. You hate for a referee to not have a confident whistle when he blows it. And then he's confused or they don't know what they want to call in it. <laughs> that one right there. I, and now if I'm later, I get a technical. Foul. Sure. Doesn't have one to, to spare, unfortunately. Zierden. Another good possession of ball movement for Creighton. Patton with the rebound and puts it up and in. Patton with seven. Good defensive possession by DePaul, but they didn't finish it off with a defensive rebound. Patton getting in there aggressive, coming up with a second opportunity. And McCallum, before anything, had a hand in him. So we'll step aside for just a couple of seconds. A little disjointed start to this second half for DePaul. The Creighton starting to flex their muscles on the road. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. As we drive our way through this one, number 23, Creighton up 19 on the road against DePaul, and the mock bracket came out earlier today. This would be your number one seed in theory, Dickey, with Villanova, Kansas, Baylor, and Gonzaga. Those would be your number one seeds in theory today.
I don't have a problem with those guys being number one seeds. I think they put it in the book consistently throughout the season. Baylor is having an unbelievable season, and obviously Gonzaga hasn't lost a day, but we will find out later on if they lose at St. Mary's. And at the end of the day, I see Creighton fitting into this mix in the tournament. I mean, when the season started, I felt like Creighton could give Villanova a run for the money for the Big East title. I still feel that way, even though Mo Watson is not with them. You mentioned it in the first half. You had Creighton winning the Big East tournament this year in your bold predictions. They certainly have the opportunity to do so. Anything can happen in that tournament. An offensive foul on DePaul. Another turnover for the Blue Demons. That's number 10. Pick up Joe Hanel, the personal. That's his second. And this Creighton team, they could be anywhere from a a stretch two seed. I mean, that, that's a stretch, but they could be. Yeah, I think they. I think they're going to be. I, I believe they're going to be a top five seed, top four. Seed. Oh, Marcus Foster, and a technical on Foster. I mean, if you're going to earn a T, that's it. That's the second time the bench has had to be restrained in this game. Ding! Elevator to the tenth floor. Wow. I know we're in Chicago, and that looks a little Jordanish, but Foster, I'm cool with the technical foul. That was a monster dunk right there, baseline. I mean, he earned it. Foster with 13 points. Earlier in the game, we saw Kyrie Thomas. I would love at some point to see those side by side. And both of those guys are 6'3", with deceptive athleticism. I know they have athleticism. But they have shown in this game some deceptive explosion into the athleticism and the finish. Look, he's putting his shirt on. He's like, I'm done. I did what I needed to do today. The guys on the bench just told him, okay, sit down, we're good. That's almost like walk, that's almost like being on stage and dropping the mic right there. He just dropped the mic. And I know Greg McDermott had to put him on the bench there for a couple of minutes just to kind of cool himself down. A, a poor pass there by DePaul. Greg McDermott was having a real tough time not smiling at Marcus Foster. And you gotta love Coach Greg McDermott. I mean, I talk about Coach Lato and how he is with his players and the, the demeanor, but I've watched Coach McDermott over the years, and I love the way he coaches his team. He builds so much confidence in his players, allows them to play, make mistakes, and still play through it, and requests that they play hard, and if they do that, they have so much freedom. Open look from three. Hegner knocks it down again, and Creighton starting to run away with it here in the second half. And the reason why I think Creighton is, can win this Big East, and the reason why I think they are a potential team to go far in the tournament is because the balance they have and all this. You see the block shot, <laughs> the lift that Patton has, and the ability to block shots, but all the weapons they have. <laughs> We asked for it. Here's your side by side of the two dunks. You ordered two, you get two. Wow. Those are ferocious. <laughs> serious, serious elevation on both of those dunks. We can make up words here. We're throwing out hashtags. How about hashtag dunkage? <laughs> My goodness. I don't know. That, that, that right there was the dunk package, no doubt. That right was. That was a that was a come through the drive through. Can I get the dunk package too? <laughs> Supersize it. That's what that was right there. <laughs> Currington, I believe, and there's out of bounds off of Currington, and it's going to go to Creighton. It's up Patton with another block. He's got a couple in this ball game. Would have had another if it weren't for a foul on the underside. And a rare turnover here in the second half for Creighton. They haven't made a lot of mistakes in this game. They've looked pretty darn good in your eyes, Dickie. They have. I mean, they're, they're a pretty efficient team with what they do, but it's good to see DePaul with, with their energy defensively right there in the full court to create that turnover. Now it's about capitalizing offensively off of the turnover. And Joe Handel threw it away. R.J. Currington was starting to go towards another direction. 
That's the 13th for the Paul. Jeff, if you noticed the Paul's last turnovers by Hanel McCallum, their jump passes they're making, they're getting in the air, stuck in the air, and making unforced turnovers. And DePaul calls a timeout. Dave Valeto had the specs on. And he's going to need to take a closer look at what's going on here with DePaul. Marcus Foster on display. Baseline, shot fake, pull up, one dribble, the knockdown three, showing his ability. And then the baseline finish, hard to the rim. It's non-stop college hoops action. It's coming up next on FS1. Washington and Markel Fultz face double-double machine Kyle Kuzma and the Utah Utes. It all starts next on FS1. Creighton starting to pull away on the road. They're up by 22 points here in Rosemont, just outside of downtown Chicago. And they're talking about the potential number one seeds that were revealed earlier today. Here's your Big East plate in the tournament. Potential for six teams to be in there, Dickey. Oh, I'm all, board, all on board with this right here. I believe that there will be six Big East teams in there. And I think St. John's right now is trying to fight to be into one of those six. They got a win today. Mm -hmm. I mean, my... <laughs> My boy Chris Mullins has those guys playing with major confidence, letting them play. But creating a five seed, I can see that. Four or five seed, I see that happening. Marquette has put themselves in an excellent position. We were at their game. Mm -hmm. They've done some good things coming down the streets, beating Creighton, beating Butler, beating Villanova. They're in really good shape, and it's really interesting. And the next team out, the first four teams that would be out would be Providence, so you could potentially have seven teams from the Big East Conference make the tournament if all things go right for the Friars. Uh, but if you're looking at Marquette, a tough loss today against Georgetown, but you know, when you're prognosticating these things, you look more at big wins yeah. than you do anything else. Absolutely. It'll, it'll take my Friars. I mean, a boy, Coach Cooley, I mean, it'll take my Friars. They're going to need to come up with some big wins coming down this stretch. Then they're going to have to go into the Big East tournament and win one or two games. Mm -hmm. Billy Garrett knocks down the jumper, the shot clock winding down. And then if they're able to do that now, you're kind of realistically talking about a possible setting. The lob from Thomas, and Zach Hansen flushes it down. And now you see Creighton putting on a dunk show right now, sharing the ball like they do. It's good to see Hansen coming off the injury, showing his athleticism. Hansen has nine off the bench. And an offensive foul. They'll pick up Joe Hanel. Running through the screen. His third personal. And right now, this is a situation in the game or the different things that are happening that are kind of frustrating for the players and for Coach Lato and the coaching staff. You get compound fouls over fouls or compound turnover over turnover. And then it frustrates. It just builds up. Joe Hanel was still on the floor, but Dave Lato trying to coach him up on the sidelines. Pound the backside, and here we go. Everything a coachable moment for Dave Lato and his staff trying to rebuild this program. Tough shot inside, and Hegner not only doing it from the outside, but a nice runner that time, too. And Hegner, you know, in the past, had played a lot of minutes with his team, and coming off the bench, giving some very good contributions of shooting it from the perimeter and now making a nice drive. Step back jumper from Billy Garrett, and he quickly has eight points. Well needed basket, and that was what they were missing in the first half with Garrett and foul trouble. As you see, Thomas split the defense and finished with the left hand. When you're trying to come back, you cannot let easy baskets like that happen. Billy Garrett as Eli Kane tries to dial one up and finally does. He's got five points in the game and just two of eight from the floor. And the baskets by Kane and Garrett in the last couple of possessions, that's what DePaul really needed in the first half. Corner three and an answer from Isaiah Zierden. It's just 
you have to love to see how Creighton plays basketball, how they share the ball, the precision on their passes. Timeout on the floor. Zach Hansen off the bench, getting it done for the Blue Jays. Creighton in command here in the second half. They've come out blistering from the floor. Remember when they started one for five from the floor, Dickey? They've been nothing but hitting the bottom of the bucket ever since. Well, this team right here is so battle-tested as far as playing against top-ranked teams, dealing with injuries throughout the season and still keeping their rhythm going. They know how to play together. They play efficient. They have so much versatility amongst each position and how they play. They have all the ingredients, all the ingredients to be a team that makes a statement in the tournament. When he talked about it at the beginning of the game, too, Creighton has had so many great teams, some great individual players, but this might be the deepest team that Greg McDermott has had in a long time. Yeah, I think it's the deepest, and I think it's the most talented across the board in every position. And also, I think it's the most grittiest team. Billy Garrett trying to knife through. Couldn't get that one. Goes back up with it. Still misses. And underneath, R.J. Currington with a chance for a three-point play. We're talking all things Creighton here. R.J. Currington, a guy who's kind of been lost on the bench for DePaul and making a nice play. Well, if he comes up with more plays like that and gives that type of effort in pursuit on offensive rebounds, he'll start getting more playing time. And he's able to convert on that three-point play. DePaul's going to need to make a big-time run here, get back into this one. Absolutely. They're going to need a big momentum starter here, whether off a steal, whether off a steal, a transition offense dunk, but something to pick everybody up energy-wise and build momentum. Garrett still hustling on the floor, knocks it out of bounds. Still Creighton's basketball with 11 seconds left, and Chris Harrison docks with his 15 points. Checks in for Billy Garrett, a season-high 15 for Harrison Docks. And Harrison Docks might be that guy that creates that spark to build momentum with the way he shot the ball in the first half. Step back three, and Toby Hegner, what a game he has had. It's tough to make a comeback when Creighton is shooting the ball as efficient as they are in this second half. Season high 14 for Hegner. He's made four of the five from beyond the arc. There's McCallum. Couldn't answer it. Al Eichelberger off the bench with an offensive rebound. Kane has been locked up. There's Harrison Docks. And a rebound by Hanson. We're talking about Creighton and all the depth. Just imagine, and you hate to beleaguer the point, but what this team would be with Mo Watson on it and healthy. Oh, they definitely would be that team they were at the beginning. As you see, a nice steal, tap, break out the dump. Those are the type of plays the Blue Demons need right now to continue to get back in this game. Unfortunate break that time. Harrison Docks had poked it away, but it got into the hands of a Creighton offensive player, Zach Hansen. He'll go to the line. And this is just getting your hands hustled. Nice play by Eli Kane to just tap it out in transition for McCallum to get an easy dunk. But you talked about where they would be if Mo Watson wasn't injured. I mean, they probably wouldn't be two and three since his injury. Mm -hmm. And they would be playing at a higher level as far as in transition. The motor would be there because Mo Watson was that motor that got them up and down the court transition-wise. Not that they're not getting transition plays today, but it would have been more consistent. Sure. It's given these players for Creighton, Davion Mintz, Tyler Clement, an opportunity to step up in a big way. And again, we talked about Kyrie Thomas nearly forced to turn over there 
for the Blue Jays, but a guy like Thomas to finally have his opportunity to shine as a leader on this team. Yeah, and, he's, and the coaches have said that he stepped up as far as leadership. They said Mo Watson was around the practices, talking to the guys at the practices, but they wanted, they went to Mo Watson and said, you know, we want to let them find their way as a leader, step up, and Kyrie Thomas was the guy doing that job. Nice move by Eli Kane. Eichelberger fouled. Get Hegner on the personal, and Eichelberger with a couple of free throws coming. Nice screen and roll by Eichelberger. Hard screen on the ball, hard roll. And when he got to the paint, he sealed, made himself available for Kane to find him for a paint touch and got fouled. Native of Michigan, Al Eichelberger. This is the front end of his two free throws. Big body. That's something that DePaul has really been lacking his size. And Peter Rickbosch, who they thought was going to be a big time player for them this year, down low and in the paint. It injury during the summer. Out for the year. So Eichelberger thrust into action early. And that's why Joe Handel started every game. And Joe Handel has come in and Having to play as an undersized big has done his job. Kind of holds the fort down in the paint defensively. Eichelberger with one out of two. We got another guy on their bench. He hasn't seen any time today. Levi Cook, big body. He averages about 10 minutes a game that they're excited about. They've got a good recruiting class coming in next year. Open up the new building, Wind Trust Arena, in the South Loop of Chicago. Hegner again fires from three and a rare miss for him. Patton, though. Oh, my. One of the things you can't teach is length. And Justin Patton has length. Using his arms to outreach Eichenberger to get that rebound and then the explosion to go up and finish. And he altered that shot, pulls down his 11th rebound. He's got nine points. Kyrie Thomas up and under with a reverse layup. And Creighton running away with it. Kyrie Thomas. Seven assists. He's got 12 points. Kane, top of the key, short. And here comes Thomas up ahead. Wide open. Marcus Foster, very short. RJ Currington trying to do it himself. Had it stripped away. It's out of bounds off of Currington. And we'll take a timeout here in Rosemont. Justin Patton, the athleticism. Creighton doing it all here today. Big East basketball presented by Jeep Grand Cherokee and Creighton starting to flex their muscles here in the second half. Justin Patton's having another great game down low, and he's one of your fresh faces in the Big East. Well, they talk about all the freshmen in the country, Malik Monk at Kentucky, Lonzo Ball at UCLA. The Big East has some amazing freshmen, as you see here. One of the guys I don't have on his list, Marcus Levette at St. John's. He's also having an unbelievable freshman year. But these guys have performed for their teams this year, have stepped up as freshmen, given big minutes, big points, big rebounds, and have made a statement. Career high for Justin Patton in the rebounds. That seems light to me that he's only got this is his career high with 11. Yeah, well, you kind of have to look at he's only averaging 24 minutes a game, and he's averaging 6.3 rebounds. You figure, you know, for your analytical guys out there, mm -hmm. as you see Mintz knock down an open three, for your analytical guys out there, per 36 minutes, if you look at it, you know, he's averaging 12 rebounds a game mm -hmm. if he played the whole game. He's just done so much to increase his stock, not only in draft, but just as a, a great basketball player, how far he has come in the last couple of years. McCallum got to go and couldn't get it to go down. Eichelberger battling, finally comes away with it. McCallum finishes it off. 
Good hustle from Al Eichelberger. Very good hustle by the whole team led by Eichelberger, but they need that every possession. The turnover by Creighton. Pass a little too hot to handle for Justin Patton. Davion Mintz, one of the two guards filling in for Mo Watson. Well, Mintz is a freshman. You know, he's kind of got, he's a freshman. He's a young guy. He's like, you handed the keys to the Ferrari to him all of a sudden at a young age. He just got his driver's license. And so he's speeding a little bit out of control on that possession. And then you saw Coach McDermott say, slow it down. Still trying to find his way here in Big E's play. Billy Garrett hands it off to Harrison Docks. Yet to hit a shot here in the second half. Kind of like Ferris Bueller in the Ferrari. Yeah. Just since we're in Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. Cole Huff fires away from three and drains another one. And that's what Cole Huff is known for doing. Being a stretch forward that can knock down catch and shoot threes. Early in the first half, he was showing us some post-up, some post-up moves, but his core is knocking down stretch three-point shots. The count of the miss. Here comes Creighton. The lob. Patton throws it down. A double-double for the freshman. And that was where Patton was getting those lob plays from Mo Watson before he went down. And now Mintz stepping in, seeing Patton running the court as a big, sharing the ball, putting it up there for him to go get it. Offensive foul. They're going to get Billy Garrett trying to get position on the elbow. I tell you what, the bench for Creighton. Now we're going to see a bit of an unload here for Greg McDermott. Martin Crumple's going to check in, but the bench, their reactions have been terrific as we see the foul on Garrett. A little act in there. Garrett trying to establish himself to get the positioning. Did he bump him? Yeah, I don't know if it was to that extreme. Patton on the bench, Huff on the bench. Hegner with a good ball fake, finds the open man, extra pass a couple of different times around the world. Quite literally, with Crumple in the game. Foster threw it away. Just over five to play. Good save by McDermott, and he's all smiles for good reason. His team up by 31. Yeah, he was getting ready to shoot that. He was like, <laughs> so Foster, you do it to me to knock down a three? I was open. <laughs> McDermott, a former center in his playing days. And Billy Garrett is going to go to the line. And he is one point away from becoming the 10th best scorer in DePaul history. Currently tied for number 11. And now he's 10th all time. Terrific career for Billy Garrett. It feels like he's been in the Big East for 10 years. It does feel like he's been here for a while. Veteran player. Definitely has put it in the books throughout his four years here in the Big East. That is his dad. Billy Garrett, senior. Great basketball family. A lot of credit needs to be given to Billy Garrett. Inside, Crumple couldn't finish it. I think the bench really would have exploded if Crumple would have thrown one down. Martin Crumple with the ball fake and then knocks down the triple. Everybody's hitting threes for Creighton this afternoon. Well, Crumple can play. He definitely can play. I've saw them earlier in the season. I mean, he's only a freshman, but he has some abilities, some very good talent and ability to stretch the floor. Billy Garrett, top of the key, a little short, and an offensive foul on the box out. And they'll get Joe Handel there, his fourth personal. Ronnie Harrell going to check in. And Kobe Paris also going to check in. Marcus Foster with another great game for Creighton. He's going to head to the bench.
for the last four plus minutes. Just the depth, and we've been talking about it all afternoon, Dickie, from Creighton. I mean, they could they could go ten deep. No, absolutely. They can. I mean, you know, I talked about Crumple right now on the line. I mean, if if it's necessary for him to come in the game and step up if they're in foul trouble or whatever the situation requires, he's a freshman that again I saw him early in the season can come in and make shots. I and mean, he plays hard. Never going to find a lack of heart on anybody on that Creighton roster. Same with DePaul. Everybody's getting after it. Speaking of which, Ten Gazi on the floor and a jump ball and possession error going to stay with DePaul. Take us to a quick timeout. Martin Crumple. Good ball fake. Filling it up. Three ball, corner, pocket. Wind Trust Arena, that's going to be the new home of the DePaul Blue Demons. Going to open up in the fall. 10,000 plus seats. Out of the South Loop in downtown Chicago and trying to get this program back to where it's filling up the seats on a day in and day out basis. And kids like that can get excited about DePaul basketball once again. We're at Allstate Arena here, opened up in 1980. First event was Fleetwood Mac. And the first DePaul game was against the John Stockton-led Gonzaga Bulldogs with a win for DePaul. I remember watching DePaul when I was younger. They were in the independent conference. It would always be DePaul and Notre Dame on TV. <laughs> but building that arena downtown is going to be an added, an added gift to this program. Should help with recruiting. Got to know where the shot clock is at the time. But that's going to be an added piece for their recruiting to bring the fans in closer from downtown. And this DePaul team, I talked about it before. They're so close. They've had games close loss to Villanova on the road. Overtime loss to Butler. You know, they've had these close games where one possession, two possessions offensively or defensively could change the outlook of everything for them. And because they're so close, with the new added arena, with the guys coming in as recruits, guys sitting out, you're going to see, you're going to see them, you're going to see them go over the hump eventually. So the resume for DePaul, just getting close, getting really close. Seven games decided by one possession. Had a couple of buzzer beaters that we've seen, Dickey. Just need to make that turn. Billy Garrett, who's a senior this year, Eli Kane, just a sophomore. Dave Lato knows that this program's going in the right direction, though. And, and Coach Lato did it before when he was here the first time. He could do it again. That's why they brought him here. And this is the growing pains right here. The, you know, the, the, the process. And the process usually has some tough growing pains early in the beginning that you have to fight through, but you have to see the brighter picture at the end of the road. Derek Wood, another one of those seniors on the floor. Brandon Cyrus, really talented freshman, feeds Harrison Dox is a little short, and he mixes it up. Davion Mintz, hard foul from Harrison Dox. And then you're talking about a DePaul team. As you see, Harrison Dodds get in there to try to steal the ball. But you're talking about a DePaul team that also, Eli Kane, mm -hmm. another, it will have another year of seasoning as a scorer. You're talking about Gage, a freshman who I like when he comes off the bench, but he'll be one more year with experience. But, you know, McCallum playing with the intensity that he has. I mean, you have some young pieces to continue to grow on with the added pieces coming in. Just that getting over the hump, that one mental play, one defensive stop, one offensive execution detail to get over the hump, and this will be looking a whole total different starting next season. It's a tough conference, the Big East. You know, we talked about who could be in the tournament as Derek Wood misfires on a three. It's six teams right now. If the tournament started tomorrow, that's the prognostication would be in there. There's only 10 teams in this conference. Well, the Big East is the Big East is out there. I mean, in the non-conference, they they put it in the books, beating non-conference teams as a conference. They beat up each other during the season. 
there's been four teams in the top 25 all year round, all year long. Creighton, even their bench guys, a lot of energy in there. Paris up ahead. And Davion Mintz knocks down another three. The 13th three pointer hit by this Creighton team today. 13 out of 21, and seven different Blue Jays have knocked him down. And Davion Mintz is getting this opportunity to continue to grow and get some added experience and confidence, which is going to help him coming down the stretch of going into tournament time. Levi Cook, a hard foul down low. He's going to go to the line and shoot a couple. It's an 11-0 run right now for Creighton. This was a 13-point game at halftime, and it took an extended run at the end of half from Creighton to really separate themselves. They went on a 12-2 run to end the half, and they've just taken that momentum and run with it here in the second. Absolutely, and then, when you look at a Davion Mintz, you're talking about a freshman that wasn't really playing that much before Mo Watson got hurt. Now he's propelled into the starting lineup. You're talking about a guy that wasn't playing that much, and then within like four weeks from now, mm -hmm. we'll be playing a lot in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so these minutes right here are very important for him to keep building his point guard skill set, being a leader on his team and running the team. He came out of the second half intermission and crumple a three and now a nasty dunk. Hey, I told you crumple can play now. I told you he can play. He's a hidden gem on that bench right there and he will get quality minutes as the season goes on he can play coming off a torn ACL last December December of 15 played just 46 minutes a year ago redshirt freshman from Slovenia Martin Crumple it has been a dunking show for Creighton here today. And you think of Creighton, you don't necessarily think of dunks. You think threes. No, if, you, if you're talking about Creighton to somebody, they're thinking about three-point shots, transition. But it's been a dunk fest today. Serving them up one after another. Six dunks all together by the team and a variety of players. Didn't even see the Kyrie Thomas one from the first half in that group. My goodness. And the Kyrie Thomas one was, whoo, did that, you say that was monstrous? It was. <laughs> that is one that, uh, that'll go down on a poster somewhere. Final 41 seconds to go on a foul on Mintz. But Creighton, they're coming off of a, a really tough loss at Xavier, 82-80, a game that they could have won if they make a couple of free throws. Xavier hit 8 of 12 from distance in the second half. I mean, that was the difference in the ball game. Otherwise, you're looking at a season sweep of Xavier from Creighton. And Xavier's, I mean, Creighton's been good on the road. Obviously, nine and one on the road. They're going into Seton Hall in their next game. It'll be important for them to take that experience they have and how they've handled their business on the road when they go into Seton Hall to keep trying to build the momentum leading into the Big East tournament. The schedule, not too bad. Heading forward for Creighton. Out of bounds, going to DePaul. At Seton Hall, Georgetown, Providence at home. They go to Villanova, host St. John's, a gritty team, a tough team. And then they're on the road in Milwaukee against Marquette to end it up. The team to watch come tournament time. Creighton Blue Jays as Levi Cook puts one up and in. And Creighton going to slow things down and Bleed out the rest of the clock. At least that's what Greg McDermott's hoping for. And this is an impressive win for Creighton. Five and double figures for the Blue Jays today, Dickey. Shared the basketball. Got everybody involved. Showed the experience they have. The, the ability to play together as a team and that just showed throughout the game that gave them the where they are right now winning this game handily because they played together our final score Creighton 93 DePaul 58 from Rosemont for Dickie Simpkins and our entire crew I'm Jeff Levering let's send it to Rob Stone Steve Lavin and Nick Baugh for FS1 College Hoops we'll be back in just a moment about 32 
and a half minutes. Glad you're with us for some bonus ball here on FS1. Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, Nick Ba in studio with you today. Plenty more coming your way on our upcoming Pac-12 contest, but in a moment we're going to hear from Creighton head coach Greg McDermott as Creighton wrapped up their 21st win of the season. They started the campaign, Nick, 18-1. and They then dropped three of their next five, a lot of it coinciding with the injury to their speedy point guard, Maurice Watson Jr. How has this team developed over the course of the last couple weeks due to that injury? Well, I think it started with just figuring out who was going to play the point guard minutes. They, they tried Zierden at the point guard, but he's more of an off guard. And I think they've settled in on the two-headed point guard duo of Davion Mintz and Tyler Clement. And they don't ask him to do too much. Just move the ball, get into the teeth of the defense, don't have to score, spray it out to your teammates on the three-point line. And you think about this team, Coach Lab, they led the nation in three-point shooting and non-conference play. And they've been struggling shooting it from beyond the arc. But the last couple of games been shooting it better. 13 of 21 today. When they're knocking down threes and they can balance it with the interior uh, presence of Patton and Hanson really kind of rounds out this whole Creighton offense. So Greg McDermott and company get another win. They remain in third place in the Big East right now. And let's bring in the head coach of Creighton live right now. Greg McDermott joins us. Coach, thank you. Congratulations on yet another win. You had four players in double figures. I want to talk about one of the players that wasn't in double figures but was close. Nine points. Zach Hansen getting more and more minutes as he comes back from that ankle injury. What is his value to your program as you guys go forward right now? <clears throat> Well, he's, you know, he's a totally different post player than Justin Patton. You know, Zach's more your typical uh, low block, just, you know, get on that pole and, and post up and score around the basket. And Justin does it with a little bit more finesse. So, you know, being able to bring in that physical presence uh, was really big for us the first half. I thought when he and Hegner came in the game and zeered, and I thought they gave us a great lift. Coach Steve Lavin here, congratulations on the win. Uh, clear that the group is, is, with each day getting better, each game, each practice opportunity, is there something you learned about your team since Watson's injury that maybe you weren't aware of before and these circumstances have revealed some of these gifts or something that's different well, about we've, this group? We've, we've had to reinvent ourselves in, in some ways. You know, so much of what we did before was Maurice in transition and us spacing the floor, uh, ball screens with Maurice, and again, spacing the floor and letting him make plays and making the defense figure out how they're going to cover that. Now we have to rely on ball movement, player movement, and to these guys' credit, they've done a great job of making that extra pass, and you know, our, our assist percentage per field goal made is, is actually probably up a little since we lost Maurice, and uh, you know, guys have settled in and are taking really good shots, and, and fortunately, as of recent, Recently, we've been knocking him down. Coach Mack, Nick Baugh here. Uh, what do you need now from Marcus Foster that you maybe didn't need earlier on in the season? <clears throat> Well, you know, leadership especially, you know, we've talked a lot in the last three weeks uh, since we lost Maurice, how important his voice was uh, to our program on the floor, in practice. And, and Marcus is our, is our best player now, and, and he has to elevate uh, his leadership, his voice on a daily basis. And to his credit, he's done that. And, uh, you know, his shot selection, Marcus is going to take it. He makes some tough shots, so I've got to live with him taking some tough shots. Uh, but that has gotten better over the, over the last couple weeks. And defensively, I think he's much more engaged than he was prior to Maurice's injury because he realizes that we have to be more sound on the defensive end than we were before because we're not quite as explosive offensively as, as we were with Maurice. Coach, a 35-point win on the road offers you multiple times to mm -hmm. smile and enjoy the game. We saw that through the course of this one. <laughs> I want you to smile and enjoy this question. Nick Ba, your radio analyst, joining us in studio today. <laughs> Critique <laughs> Nick's work as a radio analyst <laughs> for Creighton basketball. Well, he definitely has a face for radio. I think we all know that. I don't think there's any question there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm, I'm happy. You guys flew him out to L.A. You got him out of my hair for a weekend. He's moving out this way, Coach. He's already made up his mind. I've had two lattes. I'm yeah. already like a California. I'm, I'm already California cool like that now. Yeah, we're talking to his wife. I think we're going to have to move the family out yeah. west. 
It's the way it is. La Lav, if he spends a couple nights with you out there, we'll never see him again. <laughs> We're concerned about that. We could corrupt the young fella. We uh, have a negative influence on him. Uh, Nick has a one-way Uber ride to Electric Avenue right now. Coach McDermott, we appreciate your time. And we'll see you again Wednesday, you guys, next up at Seton Hall. Congratulations, Zan. Safe trick back Thanks. Thanks, to guys. Omaha. Let's stay in the Big East right now. And over on Fox.